coming into the 2016 NBA draft, Thon Maker, or Maker? I'm not sure if that's the actual pronunciation of his name. But that's how all the announcers pronounce it, so we'll just call him Thon Maker. Anyway, he was clearly not the best prospect, but he was certainly the most interesting. He was regarded as having one of the highest ceilings of the class, a raw player with incredible potential, along with an amazing personal story to go along with it. The agility, the work ethic, and the motivation to become a superstar. These were things that scouts and reporters gave him great praise for. It was clear by the draft combine, he had all the tools to succeed. It seems like this was the perfect setup, he had the perfect story. It hasn't happened. It's been over four years into his NBA career and, well, he hasn't shown any clear-cut signs of improvement. How's going folks, my name's Andy and today, let's talk about the journey of Thon Maker. Once a rising prospect, and now a sad, unfortunate disappointment who hasn't fulfilled anywhere near his expected potential. What on earth happened? Well, to start things off, let me give you guys some perspective on why Thon Maker was such a big deal to begin with. His life has been a roller coaster of emotions. Being born in Sudan in the middle of a civil war, Maker's family escaped to Uganda then eventually made their way over to Australia as refugees. Right when he was born, the odds were all stacked against him. However, moving to Australia turned out to be a huge blessing, as it was in Perth, Australia where Thon was given the chance to pursue a career in basketball. In his youth, like most other youngsters in Africa or Australia, he preferred to play soccer. That was his sport of choice, and he excelled at it. But by the age of 14, he was discovered by a talent manager, Ed Smith, who took Thon under his wing and encouraged him to play basketball, due to his sheer size. While this was the first new step of his life, it changed even further when he arrived to America. As a high school freshman, Thon averaged over 22 points and 13 rebounds a game right away in his first year in America. As a sophomore, he led his high school to the state championship, garnering a lot of praise from his peers. By 2015, Thon opted not to go to college, despite being heavily recruited by Division I schools. Instead, he took a year off to train and prep. Fast forward to the 2016 NBA Draft. At 19 years old, allegedly, the Milwaukee Bucks drafted him with the 10th overall pick. Scouts had a lot of good things to say about him. Draft analyst Michael Weisenberg stated, Legit 7-footer with a huge frame, who plays the game with energy and shows an intriguing combination of ball skills and ability to run the floor. Shows some signs of being able to stretch the floor. Can make shots off the catch and has range out to the high school three-point line. However, the main issue was his inability to absorb contact very well. Despite being over 7 feet tall, he was quite lanky, and he needed to put on more strength before he can actually play against other power forwards and centers. Additionally, there was some controversy that came up. Questions surrounding his real age, some believe he might have falsified his documents, and that he was a few years older than his listed birth year of 1997. It turns out all of this is speculation based off of a yearbook photo with no concrete evidence supporting it. Overall, it added to the uniqueness and mystery surrounding Thon Maker. A prospect with unlimited potential, but perhaps a lot of his hype has to do with his intriguing skill set, his high school highlights, and his upbringing. If you look at him objectively, he needed a ton, a ton of development. That was the first issue, because everyone's mindset was like, Oh look, a hyper-athletic 7-footer with guard-like skills. He's the next Kevin Durant, or the next Kevin Garnett. Those type of comparisons, comparing him to two all-time greats, is frankly ridiculous. These comparisons are why Thon's expectations are through the damn roof. Realistically speaking, tall, skinny players who come in super raw don't do well in the NBA. The ones who do are massive outliers. 
The second issue is, Maker's rebounding skills were god-awful, and they still are. It was a weakness coming in, but nobody thought it was this bad. From 2017 to 2020, Maker averaged fewer than 3 rebounds a game, with a pitiful total rebound rate of 11% for a guy of his height. That's putrid, and it's quite obvious from watching him that he greatly struggles against any decent rebounder. He prefers to shy away from contact instead of roughing it out in the paint. But even when he does try to go down there, he's so flimsy. He gets pushed around way too easily. However, his third and biggest issue, by far, is the pick and roll game. You'd expect a guy of his size, his length, his athleticism, even though he's weak, he should be athletic enough to finish in the paint. I mean, he did register a 32-inch no-step vertical at the draft combine. Out of all 7-footers, he had the highest among all of them in NBA history. So, he had the tools, he had the physical prowess. However, he was a very, very poor finisher in the pick and roll. In mid-2018, Maker was questioned about this part of his game and explained why he was failing at it. He responded, it's something I've got to get better at. Early on, let's say we're running a pick and roll, I just roll. After you get missed on those rolls, say you were open and you get missed a few times, you start to fade away, not looking for the ball. To play devil's advocate, the Bucks had many better options than Thon. So even though his teammates were not looking for him, frankly, maybe it was better that they didn't look for him. When someone like Giannis or Chris Middleton is running the pick and roll, you'd probably rather have them take the shot instead of feeding it to Thon, a guy who finished very poorly at the rim. All of these problems were most noticeable in his sophomore season. With nearly double his usual playing time, Maker was expected to make a huge jump. But instead, he regressed. Everything about his game fell off and he shot just 54% at the rim, which is horrendous for a 7-footer. As mentioned earlier, it was a combination of having a lack of confidence, not seeking out the ball as much as he should've, and the lack of strength hurt him against bigger guys. Additionally, he was just as bad on the opposite end. While he did show flashes of great defensive potential, quick feet on the perimeter, long arms, he showed out occasionally. But for the most part, his defense in the pick and roll was also quite poor in Milwaukee. As a youngster, it became a common trend for opposing point guards to get him on the switch, just to attack him in the pick and roll. On a positive note, he did have his moments in the playoffs against the Toronto Raptors. But these instances were few and far between. Most times, he looked completely lost and his inexperience was quite obvious. Fast forward to the 2019 trade deadline. After two and a half seasons, Maker did not impress the organization. So on February 7, 2019, Maker got traded to Detroit. The once promising, once hyped prospect got reduced to nothing more than a throw-in to a random trade package near the deadline. At this stage of Thon's career, he's basically been floating around, trying to find his place. While he hasn't made much progress in terms of box score numbers, Thon and his front court partner, Christian Wood, was given quite a humorous nickname for a front court duo. They were labeled as the Thin Towers due to their immense height but also their thin frame. Thon wasn't a fan of the nickname because for most of his life, people always joked about him being skinny, so he didn't like it. So this nickname was a slap in the face. Anyway, in the 2019-20 season, he spent a decent amount of time in the team's rotation, even starting sometimes, but overall, his improvement wasn't noticeable. For a guy who came into the league with high expectations, he floundered, and after several seasons, still hasn't shown the potential he was scouted to have. Even Kevin Garnett once predicted that Thon will be a future MVP. Looking back at that assessment, now it's laughable. It's uncertain if he can even stay in the league for that much longer. I think when it comes to young, raw prospects like Thon, there's a lot of risk when drafting him. Theoretically, he has the tools to become great, 
His body shape and his long arms remind everyone of players like Garnett, or Durant, or Nowitzki. Seven footers who can handle the ball and play from all areas of the floor. While Thon definitely showed that he can do that in high school, very few players of his skill set actually become successful in the NBA. More often than not, Thon and others of his mold end up being too weak and too inconsistent to become a star. In his case, he's had trouble putting on the size to bump and bruise with his peers down low. But on the perimeter, he can't catch and shoot or do hezzy pull-ups all the time. So his guard-like skills aren't as effective because NBA defenses are better. Perhaps, maybe he could turn it around. Maybe he could develop a specific skill set and become like a stretch 5 or something? It's a niche role that's starting to gain more traction. Hopefully, Thon will pull it together and find his way. Anyway, that's all folks. That sums up the career of Thon Maker thus far. It's been a tumultuous ride, but there's still hope. I'm not writing him off as a bust just yet. Let me know your thoughts on him in the comment section. What went wrong in his career? Do you think he could bounce back and become a legit starting big man? Let me know your opinions about him. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.